Hi fam, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Akubeze and I'm a Christian content creator based in Lagos, Nigeria. Going to be sharing the word of the Lord with you today and today's video is titled Living as God's Children. So before we get into the word, let's just say a quick prayer. Our Father and our God, I want to thank you for gathering us together in your presence again. Thank you, Lord God, for making us not only hearers of the word, but receivers of the word and doers of the word. May the word take deep root in our lives, Lord God. May the word enlighten us. May the word guide us. May the word really propel us into our destiny, Lord. And we pray, Lord God, that everything we do and everything we think and everything we believe will be for your goodness, your glory and adoration. In Jesus' mighty name we've prayed. Amen. So we are in first John chapters two, three and four today. And it's so timely. I'll sh I'll read the word and then I'll share, you know, my personal story. So by the way, if you've not been seeing my face, that's because I've been doing live videos. So be sure to check out the live section of my channel and please subscribe and turn on your post notifications because sometimes I don't have the time to pre-record and in fact most of most days these days I don't have the time to pre-record so we chat live and if you would love to feature on my live video you can send me an email akubeze at hotmail.com YouTube has this new feature where we can go live together so yeah okay back to the word first John chapter 2 as usual I skim read so please read the word by yourself get your own fresh revelation I'm only gonna be focusing on the parts that I highlighted those who obey God's word truly show how completely they love him that is how we know we are living in him those who say they live in God should live their lives as Jesus did anyone who loves another brother or sister is living in the light and does not cause others to stumble but anyone who hates another brother or sister is still living and walking in darkness. Such a person does not know the way to go. I am writing to you who are God's children, because your sins have been forgiven through Jesus. I am writing to you who are mature in the faith, because you know Christ who existed from the beginning. I am writing to you who are young in the faith, because you have won your battle with the evil one. God's word lives in your hearts. Do not love this world nor the things it offers you. For when you love the world, you do not have the love of the Father in you. For the world offers only a craving for physical pleasure, a craving for everything we see, and pride in our achievements and possessions. But anyone who does what pleases God will live forever. Those who leave you never really belonged with you. Otherwise, they would have stayed with you. When they left, it was proof that they did not belong. So you should know the difference between truth and lies. For the Spirit teaches you everything you need to know. Remain in fellowship with Christ so that when he returns, you will be full of courage and not shrink back from him in shame. We will see him as he really is. And all who have this eager, and all who have this eager expectation will find themselves pure, just as he is pure. Anyone who continues to live in him will not sin. But anyone who keeps on sinning does not know him or understand who he is. Those who have been born into God's family do not make a practice of sinning because God's life is in them. Dear children, let's not merely say that we love each other. Let us show the truth by our actions. Our actions will show that we belong to the truth. So we'll be confident when we stand before God. Even if we feel guilty, God is greater than our feelings and he knows everything. The spirit who lives in you is greater than the spirit who lives in the world. Those people belong to this world, so they speak from the world's viewpoint and the world listens to them. But we belong to God. And those who know God listen to us. Shout out to my brothers and my sisters. <laughs> so dear friends, let us continue to love one another. For love comes from God. Anyone who loves is a child of God and knows God. But anyone who does not love does not know God, for God is love. This is real love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. God lives in us and his love is brought to full expression in us. And God has given us his spirit as proof that we live in him and he in us. 
And as we live in God, our love grows more perfect. Such love has no fear. For perfect love expels all fear. If we are afraid, it is for fear of punishment. And this shows that we have not fully experienced his perfect love. We love each other because he first loved us. If we don't love the people we can see, then how can we love God, whom we cannot see? And he has given us this command. Those who love God must also love their Christian brothers and sisters. This is the word of the Lord. Sorry about the background noise. It's daytime, so there's lots of moving vans and trucks and stuff like that. But sorry about my gum as well. <laughs> it's been so long that I've done a pre-recorded video. I don't even remember that I meant to add finesse. You know, when we're alive, we just be winging it. But, um, you know, today's word particularly spoke to me because I realized that, like, you know, as living as a child of God requires that I'm set apart. I'm not doing things the way the world does things i'm not saying what the world is saying i'm not feeling what the world is feeling and it was reinforced when i went on like a lunch date not like a date but i went for lunch with a friend and you know he was talking to me about how he doesn't believe in marriage he doesn't want to get married and all and i was like how can you say that and his reasoning was like the things he has seen in this lagos like different people having a committing adultery this one is pretending this one is the father of the child. No, it's not the father of the child. All these like gross things. And I'm like, I can't even relate. Like the things I see about marriage these days, the people I'm surrounded by, it's love, it's joy. It's like, it's a kingdom union. It's what I'm emulating for. It's what I'm believing that will happen for me. I know my case will be different. And, you know, it just made me feel like, Honestly, to be a child of God, you have to believe for different. You have to believe in love. You can't be afraid. Perfect love expels all fear. You have to believe that like things will work out for you. You have to believe that like you will keep moving according to God's guidance and you will get to that place of victory and fulfillment and satisfaction and settlement and peace and prosperity. Like you have to believe for more. Believe it for it. Like like believe that and you also have to make sacrifices you can't keep sinning because of course he was going on we haven't caught up in like a while so he was going on and on about ah, ah, me i'm no longer drinking i'm no longer smoking i'm no longer having sex blah, blah, blah. he's like i beg now calm down you're extreme at least do one i'm like no i don't need to do all of that like i'm a child of god like I'm, he was like it only takes a newborn baby to live like that and i'm like yeah that's why we call it being born again like so this is just like a word of encouragement for you and honestly i wouldn't say i left that lunch feeling pressured i actually left that lunch feeling encouraged like i have a future i have hope i'm actually like optimistic about my family i'm optimistic about where this world is heading because i'm just like in my bubble of faith like i don't believe that anything that's even going on around the world is going to come near me and mine like <laughs> i believe that our case is different because we're covered by the blood of jesus and you know it's also interesting because in my second bible i read um the parts in exodus when pharaoh finally agreed for the israelites to go and you know there was a part it was literally the part of the killing of, of the first born sons and it, you know there was a part where where he was like the wailing in the egyptian like community will be so loud and the israelites will be in peace and I'm like, that is that is the life of God's people. Like, even if they are wailing around you. Let me even try and find that scripture. I didn't even bring that Bible here, but I, w I don't want to misquote it because it was it was so powerful. Mm -hmm. Exodus 11, verse, verse 6. It says, Then a loud wail will rise throughout the land of Egypt, a wail like no one has ever heard before or will ever hear again. But among the Israelites, it will be so peaceful that not even a dog will bark. Then you will know that the Lord makes my chewing gum. Excuse me. Okay. I don't even understand. What is my finesse today? Ignore that. But then you will know that the Lord makes a distinction. There is a distinction between being a child of God and a child of this world. And like I was telling my friend, give it three months. Give God three months. 
three months is even long give god one month and you will see the difference is clear so my fellow children of god oh, thank god that you belong to a different realm a different category a different class and you have a future and you have a hope and the victory is sure because you serve the one true god who died for you resurrected for you and will always come back and save you all right i love you jesus loves you the most and i will see you tomorrow baby you give me i